So uh, my name is Alex Metcher, and I'm doing a quick presentation here with the PKP dev team on performance profiling using Xdebug Profiler and Kcache Grind. And this is um, a fairly standard tool set that you can use to check performance on PKP software, but also anything else that's written in PHP. Um, my hope is that this is useful for the dev team to set some standards, but also for the tech committee and other groups, other groups who might be hosting a large install and want to be able to use their developer expertise to figure out what's uh, a bottleneck and, and so on. Um, our goal here is, uh, well, two things. One is we'd like to establish a performance methodology in our ongoing development work to make sure that we're considering performance, not only when a problem shows up, but as part of our ongoing work. Um, and then the other thing from a bit of a meta perspective is um, now that OGS, OPS, OMP 3.4 is out, um, we're gonna do some more sharing from within the dev team on how we set up our environments, how we do our work, things that we might not be um, uh, standardized on yet, like the use of debugging and debuggers, the use of a, an ID that's got integrations with you know, uh, GitHub or, or Git or that kind of thing. Um, really anything that can help and make the developer um, experience better. Use of existing data sets, ways to switch out different versions of PHP, all that kind of thing. So the first of these is on performance profiling. Um, and it's good for answering a few specific questions. One is to identify a bottleneck in the software, to answer the question, what's this page spending so much time doing? Another is to check regressions. So uh, if we uh, are used to working with 3.3, we're just ready to release 3.4, we want to make sure we're not going to accidentally introduce a much slower version of the software. This can give us a sense of whether or not the code got slower since the last release. Um, and the third question is uh, exploring complex operations. What actually happens when I click this link? As the software gets bigger and relies more on third-party um, dependencies, it's sometimes hard to just be able to answer that without looking into it in more depth. And so this is a way of being able to visualize what the software is actually doing. Um, about regressions and whether or not the code got slower, um, there's actually a way of checking that just with a, it's not a great way of doing it, but um, just if you want to have a quick estimate uh, based on uh, the two releases. One thing you can do is look at the Travis builds. Um, this is our automated testing toolkit. And if you look at uh, the OGS build cost, for example, you can see here that the last completed main build was five hours and seven minutes. Uh, the last completed uh, st stable 3.4.0 is five hours 40. There's a lot of flex in the amount of time that a Travis build takes to complete, but also there's different, um, uh, different uh, build processes here. So for example, uh, 330 uh, doesn't test on the same versions of PHP and stuff. But if you look at the individual build lengths here, it's around in 50 minutes or so to complete a, a full build. Um, this is on the main branch. On the stable branch uh, for OJS, it's 28 minutes. Um, so there's more tests in the main branch, but also the stable branch is running more quickly. So we do have some work to do there on optimization. Okay, uh, just go back to the presentation here. Um, I'd like to introduce some specific tools and how they're set up. This is just one way of doing it. Um, but the most important thing you can set up for doing profiling and performance testing is uh, Xdebug. This is a, a PHP extension um, that provides a debugger. If you're using debugging, you're probably using Xdebug. Provides a tracer that allows you to kind of capture information about what functions are performed when and with what conditions. It also does coverage analysis. So if you have automated testing, you can use Xdebug to, to report back on how much of the software was actually tested, identify areas that need more testing coverage, for example. And finally, it's got a profiler, which is the important thing we've got here. And uh, Xdebug being a PHP extension, obviously it's interested in how uh, PHP does things, but the profiler um, generates output that's compatible with this tool called Kcache Grind, which we'll come to in a second. Kcache Grind is a generic um, visualization tool and it's uh, able to work with uh, any kind of code, C code, um, Rust, you name it. Um, the second piece, yeah, this is the Kcache Grind Visualization Tool. This is a generic screenshot from some other, this is off their website. Um, we'll look at some PHP examples soon, but essentially it gives you a chance to explore um, the call stack and how much time it takes to run each things, each uh, piece of code and identify problems there. Uh, the third tool is called Siege, which I'll also show quickly. This is a benchmarking uh, application, so you can use it to simulate a bunch of different um, requests for the same page, for example, and report back on whether you in, in encountered errors at high load or whether there was a, a slow spot, that kind of thing. Um, I'll be using Siege, but there's another tool called Apache Bench, also called AB, which is kind of similar. Um, there's a bunch of these out there. So first up, I want to get everyone configured with Xdebug, with a profiler. 
Um, I'm not going to run through specific details, but it's really useful to have a PHP info um, dump available. You can use this to verify whether or not uh, the configuration you think you're editing is the right configuration file, all that kind of thing. So when you have xdebug installed and enabled, you'll want to look for something like this, which indicates, yep, the module is installed. You'll want to then configure the debug mode setting to profile, to turn on the profiler, and then turn on this xdebug start with request option. And then verify, of course, that all of these are set as, it, as you'd expect. Often, one thing people forget is to restart their PHP or their web server, depending on how it's installed. Um, so it's good to check here and make sure that once you've configured the configuration file, it actually is behaving the way you want it to. Uh, I've got a bit of information about this uh, specific setting here, start with request on trigger. What this means, oh, sorry, the last thing you want to check here is to make sure that you know what the value of profiler output name and output dir, output dir are. And those are configured on my machine like this. So um, the profiler, when it's triggered, will create output files called cachegrind.out.something, and they'll be stored in the temporary directory. So once this starts working, I'll know to look in the temporary directory for files called that. Um, about this start with request mode being set to trigger, what this does is it tells the profiler not to run all the time. If it runs all the time, things will be super slow and you'll have all these gigantic um, profiler output files uh, polluting your system. So this is a way of making it more selective so you can tell it when you want to run and when you don't. Um, what this mode does is it allows you to specify this xdebug trigger variable in the get variables or the post variables or the PHP environment or a cookie. Uh, so you can use those to control whether it's turned on or not. Um, I'm going to show it with a get or post variable. Um, you'll see in a second how that looks. But one caveat here is it only does a single request at a time. So if your main request then has a bunch of AJAX calls to other parts of the system, obviously you won't capture those because it won't pass along this uh, trigger uh, variable unless you specifically tell it to with like a, a cookie or environment or something. Um, so a quick demonstration of what it's like to visualize an article queue. Got um, my terminal open here. I've got um, uh, a request for a, an article view page right here. This is OJS 3.3.0, and I've got in this other tab here, OJS 3.4.0. So I'm gonna start with 3.3.0, and I'm going to um, xdebug, what's it called? I'm gonna trigger that, uh, xdebug trigger. That's true. And that should result in a file being generated. There it is. So I already cleared out any extras I had here, so that's got to be the right one. Um, what I can do now is I can visualize that um, that output file using the kcache grind application. And by the way, there's a different one for Windows, and there's also a web-based one that I haven't used, but uh, they're all more or less equivalent. Uh, this is uh, good for, I think, Mac OS and Linux. So I'm just going to scroll this within the window. It's quite a big display. So when I shrink it down, it's going to be a little hard to read. But I'll try and point out some of the main um, characteristics of this. So um, this uh, is the top-down view of the call stack. So of course, at the very top, you've got the main function, which does everything. On the left-hand side here, there's these two indications of um, processor time. And these look like percentages, but actually the, these are uh, units of uh, 10 nanoseconds, uh, which is actually selectable right here if you want something else. There's also, you can flip it over to what uses memory if you want to optimize memory use instead. Um, but, oops, sorry. Um, these two columns here on the left are inclusive and then self. And this indicates what amount of time the call takes. Inclusive means this is how much time I used plus everything that I um, I called from within this function. So obviously the main function is using is including almost everything. This little graph is almost completely full up, indicating that pretty much everything happened in the main function. Um, this self column is super useful. This identifies uh, the amount of time taken within just that function and not within the subcalls. So if I want to look at what the really greedy functions are, I might sort by this column and I would find, oh, look, there's actually 136 calls to the PDO prepare function, which account for uh, not, a, not a, a tiny fraction of the total time used. This is database interaction. So uh, no big surprise, we've got a lot of database calls. And actually I would expect more, but 136 calls to formulate an article view page. And uh, that accounts for 
uh, 70 nanoseconds. Um, in preparing for this, I started to notice um, things like this. We have a lot of calls to translate. That's no big surprise. So we probably haven't optimized that very much. And you might see there's translate calls. Well, guess what? There's also file exist calls from within there. There's other translate calls. Uh, there's probably, this is really trans translations as well. There's a lot of stuff here around caching that probably relates to translation. So this is an area where we could probably do a lot of work to optimize. Um, again, this is OGS 3.3 we're dealing with right now. So um, it's not the most recent version, but what we can do is take a quick look at a comparison between this and OGS 3.4. So what I would do is I would do a side-by-side -side on this. Um, I won't do that right now because I've got this small screen space to share and it's pretty uh, heavyweight to do that. But um, just to give you a sense for how you might go about it, I'm gonna go back to my web browser, go over to my 3.4. And again, I'm gonna specify this uh, xdebug trigger. That'll cause a second file to be dumped out. Um, there we go. So the one I was looking at before is this 1410324. I think that's a timestamp. Uh, this is the second one here. So let's look at that one instead. 378. So it's going to open a second window here. And I'll just try and point out a couple of characteristics here just by tabbing back and forth. So again, I'll sort by, by the self here. And we'll see here we've now gone down from, uh, what was it now? From 136 calls down to... Uh, 109. So, and that's an improvement in in in, in uh, execution time. That's good news for 3.4. Um, these aren't strictly apples to apples comparisons. I don't have the same database between the two, so uh, not quite a match. Um, you'll see as well that this call to file exists. That you've got um, file m time. These are again related to translations, and again we probably have some work to do here for optimization. So, um, I'd like to see us maybe take a look at that for the next time around. Um, some other characteristics of this tool here. If you want to look at a particular call here, let's say this PDO prepare function. This tells me that we're doing a, um, a database query. If I wanted to find out um, who's calling me, I've got a list on the side here. And again, this is hard to see with the screen so shrunk down, but uh, we've got sort of five major callers here. And you can see the count for uh, who's doing the calling. Um, and you can explore back through the stack um, uh, who would be doing those functions. So. Uh, there's quite a rich set of tools here for exploring visualizations on this. I'm just going to flip across for just a moment to um, memory for units. So let's look at what's using all the memory. Well, guess what? There's uh, PDO prepare again. It's using the majority of memory. So it suggests here again that we probably could do some work optimizing um, uh, our use of database queries. Um, a lot of calls to explode here, and they're kind of heavyweight, so that's interesting. Um, and they're typically called by the HTML purifier. We're already doing some work to swap this tool out for a different HTML purifier function. Um, I don't know whether that'll behave better or worse. I guess we can find out uh, later on. Okay, um, just to give a, a sense of how you can explore what's happening in the code base, um, it's pretty hard to get this information just by guessing. And especially as we work through um, a workflow within the dev team on how to optimize stuff, we'll have to get used to these tools. Um, so I think that's all I had for the presentation part. But I open the floor to anybody on the team if they've got any ideas for how to work in this workflow um, organically into a dev process. Uh, one thing that comes to mind for me is obviously when you're doing um, pre-release testing, that would be a great time to take a look and see if something has changed massively. Like, oh, uh, I was also going to demonstrate Siege. Let me do that just for just a moment. But uh, pre-release testing is a great time to uh, look at your database query counts, look at your memory usage, look at any of that stuff to find out whether things are behaving differently. And the other thing that'd be useful to do is, I'll make sure I do this without the um, debug trigger on because debugging is going to slow things way down, is just use um, Siege. And Siege has a couple of quick options for concurrency and for number of iteration. Um, and again, Apache Bench is very similar. Um, so I'm going to run a quick siege test uh, with um, 10 concurrent users and uh, let's say let's say time 10 seconds. I'll give it the URL to my OGS 3.3 and I'll just give it a run and see what happens. This is going to bug my machine right down, so bear with me. Them just a few seconds.
So again, we're doing 10 concurrent users. We're testing for 10 seconds. This will give me the number of users who were able to, the number of requests that were successfully performed in 10 seconds. Um, but the other way you can do this too is set the number of repetitions, and that will mean that the number of um, reps is fixed, but the number of seconds will vary. Um, either way will give you a sense for um, what was involved. And I think I've done this wrong because we're obviously more than 10 seconds. Let me cancel that. Yeah, we just kept going. Uh, I'm going to do that at the number of repetitions for 10. Let's compare the two versions with that. Okay, so in, in 10 seconds, we were able to do 1,700 requests for that article page. I'm going to do the same thing for OJS 3.4. This is a very rough comparison. I'm just noticing I didn't include the HTTPS. I don't know if I screwed that up, whether it understood what I was talking about or not. Okay, that gave us 1,300 hits. So as you see, there is a degradation in performance uh, on that between 3.3 and 3.4. It's not straight apples to apples because I don't have the same database again. So I don't know to what extent that's characteristic, but it does suggest that we should take a look into what's costing us the time there. Um, still, our uptime is 100%, so no troubles there. And that's actually not a bad number for my laptop running a table of contents. So uh, no big issues there. All right, I was uh, just asking though um, about ideas for ways to integrate this with the dev team process. We could at the end of the process do a round of performance testing. We'd have to find what those look like, um, but it'd be great to work those into the dev process as we go along to make sure that we, much like with upgrade testing recently, we identify problems when they first occur. We don't have to then dust them off at the end of the dev cycle and introduce potential regressions. Anyone have any suggestions or experience on how we might do that? I think maybe running Siege on CI would give us good number over time. Yeah, good thought. Um, and we're going to talk later in this meeting in a few minutes about uh, CI because we're talking about platforms there. But if you were doing like self-hosted CI, you'd also be able to control the load on the system quite uh, handily. Whereas with Travis, I've seen it change a lot, sort of day to night, Monday to Friday. So it might not give you the best uh, sense unless you could somehow configure it to be a strict resource limit, which I think you might also be able to do. I mean, another logical spot might also be um, at the major merge points uh, to make it part of, uh, let's say we merge the changes for uh, rewritten submission lists. Well, we could then make sure as part of the acceptance part of that before it gets merged, we could test 3.3 .3 against 3.4 and find out what the, the change in performance looks like. That would be also good. Okay, I'll leave it there, but um, uh, I'll be promoting this video and hopefully a small series of these at the next uh, Dev Leads uh, webinar presentation, which is in a couple of weeks, uh, late September, sorry, late, late August. And um, I'm hoping to build a bit of a knowledge base here for folks to use. So hopefully it's useful to the Dev team, but also to others outside. And um, yeah, stay tuned for more of those.